These pictures are of Anandashram, or abode of bliss, the residence of Swami Ramdas, meaning servant of God. He received his vision of God in 1926, after two years of sannyasi wanderings about India, during which he had many wonderful experiences under God's guidance. The ashram was started in 1932 with one small building. On a bare knoll, infested by snakes, and frequently visited by jackals and hyenas. Ram Dass's devotees all over India provided the means, and Mother Krishnabai, or Madhaji, meaning Holy Mother, provided the effort and supervision to build the ashram to the state in which you will see it, one of the finest and best kept such retreats in India. Thousands visit here each year from all over the world, staying for an hour, a day, or several months. The feeding of a thousand poor people on a feast day is not unusual. Mother Krishnabai never worries about the means or wherewithal to extend her charities. She says that is up to Ramdas. He puts it up to God, and God never lets them wait very long. Ramdas says they certainly keep that chap very busy. Ramdas's teaching is essentially very simple. He says, practice Ramnam, Japa, and Bhajan constantly. That means keep the name of God on your lips and in your heart always. He will take care of the rest. Our film opens with views of the ashram compound and buildings. Constructed on a six acre plot, surrounded by a four foot ornamental stone wall with a main gate and guardhouse to keep out animals, beggars, and other undesirables. For the benefit of visitors, not Ramdas. Ashram compound from the road in front. The dispensary and hospital, other buildings, in the trees on the knoll. Meeting place under banyan trees, looking out to the main gate. Completed platform and circular flower bed, newly completed for Sanyas Day meeting. The view from the platform of green valleys and brown hills with the Arabian Sea only three miles away. The main guest house. The governor of Kerala State comes to spend three days in rest and conversation with Papa. Flagpole and guard. gathered to see the governor go out. The other side of the guest house, which was built by the Maharani of Hyderabad. The little pandol or bamboo and matting shelter is an emergency bathroom for the governor of Kerala state's visit. Front view of the Bajan Hall, main building, with decorations put up for Sanyas Day celebration. A close up of the Bajan Hall, Ramdas and Reverend Mildred on the steps. Rear of the Bajan Hall, office building, kitchen and dining hall building, 
The purpose in visiting the ashram was to spend time in the presence of a saintly man, satsang, as they call it in India. Ramdas was available at all times, but in the cool of the morning, afternoon and evening, he would come out and sit with his devotees and give us discourses on many holy subjects. At other times he would stroll around the grounds. Papa talking to devotees under the banyan tree during Sanya's day anniversary celebration. Jaya, jaya, Lakshmi carries Sridhar to join Papa in group. Srimati Lakshmi Kautau Ramchari, a woman member of Congress from Madurai, shoes the fly. Mother Krishnabai comes to join Papa and the group as they listen to Bhajan singing. Lal Chand, formerly of Karachi, Pakistan, before partition, leads the singing as he plays harmonium. Gopal plays the tablas. Subram and others sing responses and clap hands in time with the beat. Little Sridhar claps hands and sings too, as do the other children. Papa chats with two men visitors. Swami Ramdas, Swami Sachidananda, his chief disciple, and Sridhar off for an afternoon stroll. Activities around the ashram are many and varied. Sadhus and sannyasis come and go. Men who have renounced all worldly things and wander India, sleeping where night catches them, living in caves, forests, or ashrams, seldom staying at one place more than a few days, eating what is given them. At the ashram, they stay in a specially built sadhushala, or rest house for sadhus. The everyday activities and work is most interesting and done by hand as it has been from time immemorial. Stacking hay, carrying water and other loads are some of the things we photograph. The people, especially the lovely bright-eyed children, are always colorful and active. Most friendly and hospitable, they did everything to make us feel at home. A sadhu arrives. Another one comes, with deluxe equipment of umbrella and fancy water pot. Singing, chanting, and conch blowing were frequently heard from the sadhu shala. A handsome sadhu stops to chat. Some were very friendly, most very reserved.
a group of sadhus agrees to some pictures. They put on formal clothes for the occasion. The markings on forehead, chest and arms are of the Das sect of Vishnavites, or servants of God in his aspect of Vishnu the Preserver. One stands in traditional penance posture. Hay on a stack, you must first get it on your head. Then you must climb a ladder. No messy machinery around here. Madhiji and Ramdas supervise. Tere de Kana carries a bale of fresh cut grass to the cows. The grass is kept cut by human lawnmowers armed with short sickles. Water is distributed to necessary points by head power, usually a woman's. Some carry a copper pot full and never spill a drop. Carrying water from the well, the last one to have any when we left in May. Here's the well. Note, small bucket used because the water was so low. Water was not exactly comparable with our water, but nobody complained. Swami Krishnananda on his way to morning bath. Charcoal burners carry in the day's work on their heads. The bags weigh 60 to 80 pounds. They carry them perhaps six miles and earn two rupees or 45 cents a day. Lakshmi and her children, Sridhar and Sister Shashila. Little one is lost and forlorn, sits and cries. Bigger boy asks him what's wrong, then says, come on, and we'll find your mother. Indian children take wonderful care of little brothers and sisters. Little Vivekananda is having a lovely time in the hot sun until Nemesis in the form of Mother with a cloth appears. Now joy is more restrained. Sridhar and his Aunt Ganga. Women and children around the ashram. 
colorful saris worn by a group of women on the village street. Children always have to get into a picture. समझदार तो चुप रह जाता मूरक शोर मचाता मेरे राम के दरबार में सब जीवों का खाता मेरे राम के दरबार में सब जीवों का खाता उजली करनी करो हमेशा कर मन करियो काला उजली करनी करो हमेशा कर Tonga, an ancient form of conveyance. Young Muslim girls bring their little brothers and sisters to dinner. The ashram was almost always filled with music of one kind or another. Even at night, the howling of roving jackals and the drums and conches of a nearby temple kept us from being bored. Some wonderful singers and instrumentalists visited and performed, much to our delight. A number of feast days were observed, including Go Puja, or Cow Worship Day, Ram Dass's birthday and Sanyas anniversary, and a three-day visit from the governor of Kerala State. We saw the ceremonies of a young Brahmin boy receiving his sacred thread on his 13th birthday, marking him as a man capable of assuming certain responsibilities. We were invited to a Hindu wedding. We saw poor feeding. A thousand people fed, one meal each day, on three successive days. Woman singer Maturabai and young tabla player Ram Kishore. Wonderfully sweet voice, tremendous range and an amazing control as most Indian singers have. They are trained in breath and vocal control from childhood. She plays a tambour and uses a clacker with castanets in it for keeping time. Most Indian music has a definite rhythm and sometimes a real hot beat. Note her concentration. She is most devout. And her songs are the typical religious music of India. Here is Maturabai. She comes from Ahmedabad in Sindh country. Go puja, or cow worship ceremonies. These include putting round markings of milk on the cows, putting flour and paste on their heads, bowing to them and garlanding the bulls. Here are buffalo cows in a wallow. Not the cleanest bath, but very cooling. The one drying off has a little white heron in attendance to pick off the flies and insects. Buffaloes have no hair, so they must get into the water frequently to avoid being fried by the hot sun. The governor of Kerala State, Ramakrishna Rao, came for a three-day visit with his aides, an armed guard, and a flag requiring the erection of a pole. Swami Atmananda, who had been in jail with him during the Gandhi days of civil disobedience. 
walks over to inspect the dispensary. The guard of honor is dismissed. A young woman from Saurashtra, Guli Chablani, who became a very dear friend, pays her respect to another woman by taking the dust from her feet. Saraswati, the beautiful wife of the ashram doctor, and the doctor himself, R. Kupaswami. Here they leave their house bound for a gathering. The man always walks ahead, followed by their maidservant, who works from nine to five, six days a week, and is given two meals a day and eight rupees a month about a dollar seventy-five. The ashram built and operated a school for many years. It was the custom then to give all the children new clothes once a year. The school is now run by the state but the giving of new cloth is carried on. Here the youngsters march in singing and seat themselves on the platform before Ramdas. Each one comes up for the new clothes and runs off to change. These may be the only new clothes the kids will get all year. See the girls sitting on the left and the boys on the right. Prasad, plantains in this case, are distributed to all. The young boy has just received his sacred thread of the Brahmin caste and is robed in the ceremonial red cloth, indicating he has reached maturity. It's given to all Brahmin boys at the age of 12. Among Indian instruments, the sitar is perhaps the most difficult one to master. Here a master and his pupil practice together. The sitar has 13 strings one of which is used for melody or time, the others, being in two groups of six, are used for chord accompaniment. Note the rapid fingering and use of the melody string. A young friend also enjoys the music. Grounds are decorated for Swami Ramdas's birthday celebration. 250 guests were at the ashram. As part of the celebration, the poor are fed. Here are some waiting at the gate for their turn to dine. Mm -hmm. 
note varied quality and quantity of clothes. Now they are trooping in to take their places at the dining table. Here they are seated on the ground. Their dish is a large plantain leaf, rice is heaped on it, and condiments ladled over it. Children get the same portion as adults. Leftovers are wrapped up in a corner of Mama's sari and taken home. Everybody always washes hands before and after eating. A long trough provides facilities. There's always a lot of activity around the grounds on a feast day. Women and children, crows and dogs. Here is some of it. An old sadhu leaves. A young sadhu gives us a prono. A little girl with a skirt but no blouse. The pandal erected to shelter diners from the hot sun. A little girl carries her littler brother. Blind man led by son using stick. Departure is such sweet sorrow. When guests leave, there's always the bustle of loading the little car and saying farewell, with garlanding, giving of gifts, and paying respect to Ramdas and Krishnabai. A typical leave taking scene. Swami Hari Harananda comes over. Francis loads the car. How can he get all that baggage in and passengers too? Sri Ramaswamy, the editor of the Ashram magazine, The Vision, joins the group. A young movie producer from Bombay bows at the feet of Swamis Hari Haryananda and Sachidananda. Swami Sachidananda comes down the steps to join the group. An old devotee arrives. Papa comes with his retinue. Gifts are exchanged.
departing guests climb into the car. Ram Das and Krishna by give farewell pronoun. Reverend Mildred Garland's Modigy and bows at her feet. Lakshmi takes a garland and tries to make a hair ornament, but is unsuccessful. Mother Krishnabai then takes it and skillfully forms it into its right shape. Reverend Mildred leaves the guest house. She says au revoir as our picture story ends, wearing her sari and flowers in her hair. And so ended our visit to Anandashram, truly the abode of bliss. And we flew home to America. Never will we forget the loving friendship given freely to us by the many Indians of all castes that we met, and the care and consideration and thoughtfulness lavished on us by Ramdas, Mataji, Satchidananda, and the Ashram people. Satsang, or being in the presence of saintly ones, is like sitting in the warm sun and feeling the heat and light flow into your whole being. Prona.